Chief uh, Manora Madwa for and welcome for uh, to the South African Leadership Gentlemen's Club. I would like to welcome everyone, including those that are on Facebook Live. Today it's a very, very important lecture. I've seen messages since this morning when I wake up. Happy Father's Day, Happy Father's Day, uh, right throughout. Uh, exciting times. Uh, fathers uh, uh, have got that recognition. Uh, my challenge is to recognize ourselves uh, as fathers ourselves, but that will, will, will be unpacked clearly by our guest here, lady, uh, ladies and gentlemen. So just quickly to introduce Saljek, the club that we are with uh, to everyone, to new people who have logged in and to those who have logged in on Facebook Live. The South African Leadership Gentlemen's Club was launched or established in 2019 in November. So November of last year, we were one year old. Uh, we launched in a historic village of Hamanskral. Uh, we decided to be a, a club that reaches the people that it wants to address and assist. So hence, we, we did not go to your Santins and, and your Brian staying far away from the people. So, so this club's main purpose, I would just, uh, the philosophy of the club is uh, building leadership and leadership starting from home. Uh, we are strong on our philosophy that uh, uh, family is the foundation of leadership. Every family, every society, if you want to see the make of the society, you need to look at the family. Uh, the formation of a family clearly tells you what kind of leadership you would get in your communities. So for everyone who wants to who surprised what kind of leadership we have today. Look at the families that we have. Family is a prototype of the, of the, of the society or society is a prototype of the family, whichever way you look at it. Uh, what is important here, what I need us to, uh, to clarify it. When Saljek was founded, it was founded as a national club uh, looking at engaging men uh, to just get them to be active in their positions, uh, in their positions as, as, as leaders of their families and their homes. Often we say we want to produce leaders of tomorrow, but with Saljek we say we need to produce leaders today for tomorrow because today the damage is getting done. Today, every time there's damage that is happening and we do not see uh, uh, we, we find that we, we provide a, a not, not me too kind of a solution as the club. We have the five founding pillars that are the foundation of the club. And these five founding pillars are based uh, as a foundation so that every, every uh, challenge or every program that we have as a club should come out of this challenge. The reason why we have this founding five, pill uh, five pillars it is because uh, we looked at what could be the cause and the pain that the society is going through. What is the pain and what is the, the cause of the pain that we are going through as a society? Then there were a lot of hypotheses. Uh, out of all those, uh, the founding pillars came out as, as the solution, as antidote, if you want to use that, to the challenges that we have. And, 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 and of all the hypotheses that came, Politics never came out as, as, a, as, a, as a challenge. Uh, Gender-based violence never came as a challenge. Uh, what came as a challenge, the biggest thing is lack of leadership. So our pillars, uh, the first one that we started with was uh, 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 reviving the, the man's mind. So reviving a man's mind so that when the mind changes, everything that gets invested in the mind, it's able to stay there and develop a fruit that our makers it made us to. So today's program uh, that we are doing, it's, it's, it's a flagship program of the club. It happens every twice a month. So if we have one today, then it means tomorrow there's no lecture. The next lecture is coming the following week. So these lectures are meant as per the first program of liberating the men's mind to help the men who are here and women who are here to get their minds liberated because they learn new things. And it is for that reason that we engage high quality speakers of high caliber to come and share their wisdom with the club and with the men here. These guys come here to give on their time. 
uh, to, to help the nation without any cost. That is why we encourage men to join these lectures, to learn more. This is class, class, uh, class book material that you get in the lectures. But here the leaders are saying, we're giving you this knowledge and these tools for you as a man and a woman to go and be able to assist yourself and move forward. Also on decision-making. So I encourage everyone who's here to always, when you come to these lectures, bring a friend, bring a friend, bring a brother, bring an uncle. These tools that are being given here are meant specifically for you so that you change in your communities. So various programs that we have leadership Ramadwa. We have programs that deal with boy child. We have programs that deal with father and their children. We've got programs that deals with uh, uh, economic issues. Uh, we have got programs that talks to uh, building the intimate relationship with the land. Uh, generally our resources such as the land, uh, the, the communities, because the community is a resource as well, as well as money. Because our people only see money as a resource. So we say even neighbors next door and the community that we live in, it's a resource itself. So this is, this is, this is our pillars. They mainly address the psychosocial and economic challenges of our time. So each one of those pillars that can be uh, visited on our website clarifies exactly what we stand for as the club. Uh, it's unfortunate that the society that we live in uh, addresses the challenges of lack of leadership as if they are the symptoms of those challenges. Uh, and I'm gonna repeat that. We live in a society that addresses the challenges or uh, the symptoms of the, of the challenges of, of the challenges as if they themselves are the cause of the challenges. For instance, you look at one of the issues that we're talking about in our communities, gender-based violence, women are beating, men are beating women or men are beating women. Those issues are all symptoms of lack of leadership. If we had leadership from our families, we would not have that. However, the society that we live in, the resources all are being put at addressing those symptoms instead of addressing the cause of that symptom. So we find that as a nation, we will continually have this issue talking about lack of, I mean, gender-based violence, gender-based violence until we were blue in our face. So at Saljek, our approach is quite different. That is why you don't see us having matches on the street saying we are marching for this and that because we have noticed that matches are not delivering anything. And we're not talking about gender issues. We keep harping on leadership development. So that is our approach. So ladies and gentlemen that are here, Today, it's not about me talking too much about this club. Uh, I'm gonna talk forever if I have to talk about Saljik. <clears throat> See, it's, it's just so much passion that I have for this club. But today it's the powerful information that we'll be gathering. I, I, I suggest you take out your notepads and you'll be ready because what is coming your way, it's amazing. Uh, you'll be given the tools of how to navigate these difficult times. That there are matter, we have seen men falling since the Garden of Eden. Man has never risen since then. God kept sending men and sending men, and ultimately we fall and we fall and fall. At some point, he sent his son, Jesus Christ, to come and die for us, but in the same breath, we still keep falling. So this lecture was thoughtly, was seriously thought of that let's find a way on how men can claim their power back because we don't have the powers. We don't run our families anymore. We don't run our, 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 our communities anymore. Criminals have, are running our communities. Governments are running our families. And it is a sin and a travesty to have a government running a family because a family came before the government. A family is the first ever institution on planet Earth. But now men have lost power. We don't run our families. We don't run, uh, we don't manage our, our families. Everyone who manages our families, it's anybody else except us men. So this lecture today, it's aimed at giving men those tools for getting their power back and be able to run their families well effectively and run the communities that we live in because criminals run our communities. Our children are terrified because men have lost their power. So today, gentlemen and ladies, we are going to get our power back through the amazing Dr. Ramadwa. His biography is here right in front of me. It says Ma'adwa. Uh, I mean, Rama, it says Manu Ramadwa is a resurrection speaker and a coach. 
a leadership consultant, strategic planning facilitator, and author of life, education, business, and leadership imperative. He is an authority who is recognized for his customized, impactful uh, inspiration, organizational culture, leadership, and workplace ethics and conduct, conduct talks. His simplicity is influenced by his elaborative nature uh, polished by his massive experience in classroom as a teacher and a school principal. Madra, uh, Ramara is a thought leader and an opinion maker frequently, uh, frequently used by various media houses such as TVN, you know the TVN uh, television program, ENCA, everybody knows it, SABC News, we all know it, Palafara FM, we know it, Josie FM in Johannesburg, uh, SAFM, Alex FM, Channel Africa, uh, Move Magazines, Kruger's Dope News, Ranfontein Herald, and City Press. Gents, this is this is kind of material that comes to Saljek. And if you if if you don't miss an opportunity, you grow. Manu Ramada's audio teachings on leadership, on learners and teachers uh, solutions are what this generation has been eagerly waiting for to bring about transformation in education and corporate bo uh, corporate boardrooms. Among these audio uh, collections are the following, five qualities of a professional, five pillars of, of teachings, successful new beginnings, uh, five senses of leadership, and five R's of resurrection, strategic planning model, in bracket. He's all, he also has an audio material for young uh, people, identity, take charge, take charge, uh, as well as student transition uh, for tertiary students. Mr. Amado uses his radio show, the revival show of West Side FM 98.9 uh, megahertz to make an impact in the, in the lives of people on a weekly basis. He is currently busy shooting his debut television show called Resurrection Leadership Conversations, which has already shot five episodes. Mr. Ramadwa is an, a founder of the Ramadwa, Mano Ramadwa Education Foundation, which aims at monitoring, monitoring young people to discover and polish their innate gifts uh, from a young age. Love it, beautiful. Over and above his teaching qualification, Mr. Ramara holds an advanced certificate in school leadership and leadership from Matthew Gonewa School of Leadership. He also done work for many schools across Gauteng province and beyond, including districts and various retail stores. Mr. Ramara lives in Johannesburg in South Africa. That was, that was a... <clears throat> That was a marathon reading your biography, Leadership Ramaro. Very exciting. We are Thank actually you. waiting for you to just take us through. We will, we, I will be handing over to you now so that we jump into it right away without wasting any more time. We live on Facebook and uh, we are also uh, here. I see people are already in the house. So all uh, over to you, Leadership. Thank you. Um, yeah. Thank you, Mr. Tlagwe. We we are grateful to, um, to be invited um, to this kind of lecture. And um, yeah, it's, a, it's one of those days that when you, when you take a moment and reflect, you, you start realizing that we come from far as, as human beings and um, there's still more that we can still achieve. And um, yeah, and just as to kick it off, um, Kicking it off on a very lighter note, um, and I would love to say happy Father's Day mm. to all the men out there. Mm. You, you, you would understand there's lots and lots of confusion on a day like this where uh, mothers are also wished happy Father's Day uh, mm. because of the confusions that we have um, in the world and um, particularly now in our country. Mm. But um, to, as, as I would actually go on, I, I just want us to take a moment um, and just love what we have heard at some point. Um, during the course of the week, I was listening to Steve Miller and um, 
particularly I was listening to that song, Tell Me, Tell Me, Where Did We Go Wrong? Mm -hmm. And it raised a question for me to say, in the current situation when we have um, men so feeling so disempowered, where did we go wrong as people? And um, when you hear situations about men killing themselves or killing their spouses and, and so forth, you still ask the same lingering question, where did we go wrong? And you go into schools like I always do, and you find young people in the schools and um, you just look at the movements of the young people, uh, the boys and the girls alike, but when you look at it, you realize that there's a shift somehow. And you ask yourself, where did we go wrong? And, and these are the questions that we need to be, uh, to be asking. And importantly, not just asking them, but asking them and having a mindset that says, let us try and brainstorm the solutions because nobody has all the solutions. Mm. And, and um, at a time like this, uh, sometimes, you know, when, when men keep quiet or when they choose not to participate, what happens is that um, somewhere along the way, there would be a force that will actually take over and try to provide some kind of leadership. Whether this leadership is taking us to the right direction or not, it's, a, it's, a, it's an issue that we can debate. But mm -hmm. unfortunately, when debating things like this, we end up not uh, gaining much ground than when we had actually worked around it in order to change things. And uh, I also need to acknowledge that in the beginning, you said something very interesting to say, men fell. And I just want us to go back there and say, in Genesis 3, we, we, we know this story where um, the serpent was granted an opportunity to be next to a man who was created in holiness, who had God in all um, his avenues. Whether, whether it was through his skin, he could actually hear God. Whether it was through his ears, he had such connection with God because he was created in the image of God and likeness. So everything else about God was mm -hmm. endowed on this man. Mm -hmm. But in that, in that garden, this man, um, we all know what happened. But this is what really happened um, because the serpent was there and he was seeking to dispossess and to dispose. And it, this is very important, mm -hmm. to dispose men of his positioning so that he can be able to do whatever that he wants to do with men. And out of that incident of the, of the uh, Garden of Eden, three things that I have observed that actually men lost. Mm. The first thing that happened was that the foundational structure was shaken. Man who was founded on the basis of the relationship with God, mm -hmm. he was shaken because he was no longer in the Garden of Eden in the presence of God because he was eventually expelled from the holiness of God because he did not deserve and he was no longer in the same form where he could actually do all these things. Mm -hmm. Secondly, the decision-making was outsourced. Mm -hmm. He outsourced the decision-making that he was given and which was the most powerful thing that God had given to a man. Um, you will remember at one point, God, when he spoke to him, he said, you will name all the animals and whatever that you say shall be. And right now, when we talk of all the beasts of the earth, when we talk about all the animals that we can know, and when we talk about all the creatures that have been created, all of them, were named by this man who had all decisions and the power to decide on. If you look like a zebra with all those, with all those stripes, but mm. um, I, I feel like I can change this name and give it in, in, in a different name. Adam mm. had the power to do that. So the decisions were actually endowed on him, but that result, took everything away from him 
and decision making was outsourced and never taken back to him. Mm. The third thing that happened there was that the natural consciousness was lost. Now that consciousness is the consciousness that all of us would aspire to have. If mm. I am sitting here and mm. I know God is coming, remember after he sinned, when mm. God was coming, he had God coming. Mm. So he had that natural consciousness. Mm. And each one of us should actually possess that natural consciousness. And as a result of us having fallen, mm. it shifts and drifts away from us. And that becomes the problem. Now, what is a man without all those three? Mm. A man with no decision making, mm. a man who has no consciousness to, uh, with God, a man who has no foundation. Mm. What is a man if he does not have that? Okay. Of course, when he has lost that, something critical came into his being and it's called confusion. So he became confused. He did not understand exactly where he was. He did not understand exactly how he was going to live his life. And hence he was given new instructions to say, from now onwards, you will have to work hard and sweat and all that things that he was never created with. So that was damage control coming in. And you can only do damage control when there is confusion. Mm. Now, in the current situation that we are living in, mm. confusion that we see, we see it when all prisons are so full with men who had the potential mm. of creating something big. Mm. Within the prisons, we are sitting with people who could have been managers and CEOs of multinational companies, mm. but they're languishing in jail. Mm. And we are seeing men who who have built certain structures or who have headed huge organizations, but they have left them because they lacked that natural consciousness and corruption became the order of the day. And things just went from good and great to the worst. We also see this consciousness when we can no longer determine who is a man and who is a woman because you're moving the streets of Johannesburg. You're moving the streets of Western and you mm. think you're meeting a man. And mm. in that conversation, you start mm. realizing that here, the structure is a man's structure, mm. but the inside is no more the inside of a man. So yeah. com confusion of homosexuality has rested in the man who now is actually just fronting as a man. Yes. We now know um, it's not just a man, but you would see a woman walking and all that, you know, just exhibiting the, the, the actions of a man only to find that this is no longer a, man, a woman, but the inside has now transformed into something different. Confusion has rested in. And you find families, families that are actually going very strong. And once the situation comes in on, on all these um, dispossession that has been done and made against men, you find that the, almost every second or third family that you meet, you find that it's a family that has come out of a divorce or a family that is actually made up by two people who might also, both of them have been coming from, from um, broken families. Now, these are the confusions that are coming in. And when you move along the streets of Johannesburg, even when you're reading newspapers, we now have a new trend on, on social media where you find men bearded like myself and women who are as old as you can say it. But they are walking around in clubs holding the beers or rather the bottles of certain beers that are actually put on the head. And it looks like something that is palm. Confusion has rested in. Men are actually defined now. If you are to look at the way a man is defined in the street, he's defined by how drunk he can be. And when you look at how a normal person who is drunk loses the natural consciousness of what a man should have. And that is why a lot of them are sitting and regretting with things that 
when you look at it, these are simple things that if the foundations were not shaken, we would still be saying man is in his rightful position. Beautiful. But what do we do? Because in, as a result of all this, manhood gets to be redefined. I was talking about it earlier in the beginning of this session, where you find women are, are wishing each other, or maybe children are wishing their mothers happy mm -hmm. Father's Day on Father's Day. And then when you interrogate that, the only issue that comes out or any other reason that will come out would be because my mother was doing what my father should have done. Mm -hmm. can, I, can I actually contest this view? Mm -hmm. There's, there will never be a time when a woman would be transformed to become a man. Yeah, all right. There will never be a time. Mm -hmm. It is fine when a woman is doing all that she could because the man has sidestepped, but she is never going to be a woman, a man, and she can never be wished Happy Father's Day. 100%. That title belongs to men, just mm. as the title of Happy Mother's Day mm. belongs to the women. Mm. Now, we have, we have um, gays and lesbians claiming also fatherhood. Mm. We, we are seeing people who are saying, I cannot be a man, I don't want to reproduce, but they are going into courts and they want to adopt children mm. and expect them to call them fathers. Mm. These, are, these are the confusions that have come. At the mm. center of it, man has been dispossessed. Mm. Dispossessed sometimes by things that he could take very much control of mm. if he does want to. Science on the other side is not really letting the men go mm. because now men is now defined as a sperm donor more mm. than just being a man. Mm. That is why they have taken what belongs to a man that should actually be utilized in a natural way. And it's now can be injected into a woman so that they can have this kind of breed that they can control and call it a man. Media is doing all it can uh, because it is also pushing its own agenda where the man should be vilified maybe for the, for the action, for the, for the worst action of the individual view. Mm. And the, the agenda that goes dispossesses the man because mm. the man does not have to have a position. Mm. You will realize that even um, the, 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 the corporate world had gone to a point where instead of empowering young girls, mm -hmm. they have gone on to a point of separating and saying, take a girl child to work as if the boy child does not need to go to work. Mm -hmm. But when the boy child is not going to work or is not doing what he's supposed to do, or is not gaining ground in, a, in terms of um, his financial stability, that same one who is labeled to be the breadwinner tend mm. to lose mm. out of the actions that the media and all these other people are mm. trying to do to try and reshape the foundations because they have now realized man is as powerful as ever because mm. God created him just to be like that. Mm. Now, here is the thing. I'm sure in this lecture, we are not talking about whether women are stronger than men. We are focusing on this man. Yes. Because it is this man who leads the family. Mm -hmm. It is this man who leads the country. It is this man who leads organizations, mm -hmm. especially those that are actually um, been given unto him to lead. Mm -hmm. There is this man who has to lead the church and be able to be at the center of the moral regeneration. This is the man that we are talking about at this moment. What then do we do when all situations are like this? Mm. The big question people would say, what do we need mm. when, the, when the situation has gone like this? We, mm. we, have, we have situations that are taking place in the country. We have politicians who are supposed to be at the forefront and be able to do certain things in order to bring instability of the man. Mm. 
but that is not actually driven. And what this country needs at this moment, and it's not just this country, but it is the world. What the world needs at this moment mm. is what we call resuscitation leaders. Mm. Leaders who are able to resuscitate, to resuscitate environments that are dead. Leaders who are able to resuscitate communities that are dead. Mm. Leaders who are able to resuscitate the thoughts and dreams of the and the aspirations of society to become alive again that people of god can begin to have enough hope these are the leaders that we are looking for and these are the leaders that need to claw back their power now sometimes it's very tempting when we are talking about the power mm. Because one would ask and say, what is this power about? What does it entail? Mm. Our power as men is inherent. Mm. We did not choose to have it. Mm. We were endowed with it from creation. Mm. Our power is that of dominance. We have been given the opportunity to dominate this earth so that in this earth, the only creature that represents God is this man that has been empowered in this environment. No animal should claim power. No any other spirit should claim power. But man alone should be able to dominate this earth because the earth was created for human beings. Our power is creativity. We are human beings who have been created by the same God who is creative at his best. And that is why we are creative beings. When you look at all the tall buildings that have been created here, it is as a result of the influence of man. When you look at families that are going strong, it is as a result of this man. When you look at the environment that we are living in, it is the man that has influenced over the years. And these men moving away from the center stage, this empowers the earth, this empowers the families, this empowers organizations, and eventually this empowers the legacy and the future of our children. The power that we have multiplies and that is exactly what we were created to become we multiply the seeds that we have have been given so that we can multiply and give more and more and it is not just more and more in the sense of giving birth to many children but it is the multiplication of what and who we are inside that must be poured out to the others so that even when I am weakened, but there is another one who has taken up the baton to move forward and create more for communities and the families that are existing in that space. Our power cares. It is this power that we have that must create opportunities for families to move and to live peaceful and happy lives. It is this family, this power that we have that must create opportunities in, in the workplaces where we are able to look at the needs of other people and be able to implement that in a caring and loving manner. That is what our power is for. Mm. But one would say, you have spoken about resuscitation leadership or resuscitation leaders. Who are these resuscitation leaders? Because we claim and we hear people who are saying they are leaders. We have seen leaders in politics who have actually sold out completely. Mm -hmm. And their understanding of being leaders can be challenged by even those who are minors in, the, in, the, in their own space. Mm -hmm. Here is how I define a resuscitation leader. 
a resuscitation leader is one who has the capacity to move an organization, mm. to move an institution, to move a country, to move a family from the state of unconsciousness to a state of consciousness. Wow. That's what a resuscitation leader is. Wow. Now, you see, when we talk about resuscitation, those who have done medicine will tell you that in order when someone goes unconscious, it takes about six minutes to get that person back. If you don't act within six minutes, then you have lost that person completely. Now, what does that actually say to us? It simply means that we need to be able to, desire, to decide on the spot whether mm -hmm. we are resuscitating or not. So decisions must be made. You'll remember what I said in the beginning, decision-making was outsourced. Now mm -hmm. we need men who will be able to take decision and say, this one I am doing. Mm -hmm. And they don't just have to take decisions, mm -hmm. but they have to take decisions at a high speed mm -hmm. because Walala was sung. So decision-making must be made. Mm -hmm. It must be made fast. Because if you, if you just take your time, God does not actually operate like that. If he wants you to act today, he gives you the power and the empowerment to act today. If you don't act today, tomorrow he appoints someone else. Yeah. So it's important for resuscitation leaders to understand that there is time factor. There is also decision-making factor. Mm -hmm. Now, how do we know that this is a resuscitation leader? Very interesting stuff. If I am a man and I have no vision, how would I resuscitate a situation to one? Mm. Because the situation looks dead. Mm. And for me to get this situation back, mm. I need to be able to know exactly where am I taking this situation. Mm. So I need to have a vision myself. Because it is the vision that I have that will be able to elevate and take out my vision and accompany it with many other visions that I can see in the communities that will elevate the community's vision and create ultimately the country's vision. Nehemiah 1 verse 3 and 4. And I want to read this because I want you to understand how these things sometimes can come about. Mm. And it says here, and they said unto me, mm. the remnant that are left are of, the of the captivity there in the province are in great affliction and reproach. The wall of Jerusalem also is broken down and the gates thereof are bent with fire. And it came to pass when I heard these words that I sat down and wept and mourned certain days, and fasted and prayed before God of heaven. Now you see, if you are passing by a place and you don't get affected by what is happening in that environment or in that space, perhaps you don't really have a vision. Mm -hmm. Because a resuscitation leader, when they move from one place to the other, when they move from one township to the other, they must be able to aspire and say, I can see the gates of this village have been broken down. Mm -hmm. I need to understand exactly why these gates are broken down. Mm -hmm. And can I play a role in reviving these gates? Because that's basically what is happening. When yes. I speak to people in schools, especially, I always challenge principals and say, if your school is located in, in, in um, in the, in, the, in the township X, mm. let's say Middlelands for argument's sake. If your school is located in Middlelands and around that school, there is a drug problem mm. and you do nothing about it, mm. then your school must cease to exist. Mm. Because when that school exists in a drug infested, problem, uh, infested area, mm. it definitely has to solve the problem of drugs in that community. If your, your school is located in Hillbrook, 
where there is a lot of prostitution. Mm. Your school must be able to solve the problem of prostitution in that area. We understand you cannot solve the complete problem, but mm. start making a dent because you have been empowered by virtue of being there to be able to deal with the problems existing within that area. Wow. You cannot be in an area where there is a lot of littering and you know, you, the, people have just changed the environment, beautiful space into a dumping site and you do absolutely nothing there. Then it tells me you are not a resuscitation leader because resuscitation leaders are all about moving from unconsciousness to consciousness. So if you are conscious about a problem, find a solution to make it a problem that can be solved, which means you will move from unconsciousness to consciousness. Visionaries are affected by the current state of affairs. They are pained by what they see. That is why Nehemiah said, I wept, I fasted, because that had touched him. Visionaries are affected by the state of politics. What is the politics around this environment? What are people doing in this environment? What are the main challenges that are happening in these communities? If you get to a point where you are affected by the politics of that environment, yes, you are a resuscitation leader. And that is when you are busy clawing your power back. <laughs> Visionaries are affected by community challenges. We can't have communities where people are killed every day. And we do not have people who are saying, this is enough. And I'm going to challenge men in this case. We yeah. cannot have communities where men would be comfortable when there are people being killed on a day-to-day -day basis in an environment where they are living. Now, if you let that go and you do not actually want to participate, then you're not a resuscitation leader because you don't possess any vision. Visionaries are affected by the legacies they leave. Now, here is the thing. When we leave legacies, we don't leave legacies for ourselves. We leave legacies for our children. Yeah. Now, in the current space of the coronavirus, mm. when, when things are happening the way they are happening, mm. when schools are closed willy-nilly the way they, are, they, they were um, pushed to be closed, mm. what kind of legacy are we trying to leave for our children? And it pains me when I hear a leader saying and claiming, that mm. let the schools be closed. Mm. The effect of 2020 on the academic year of learners, particularly these ones who are in grade 12, mm. it's huge. And because after this year, everybody would have forgotten about those learners. Mm. Those learners are going to see themselves so frustrated when, it, when they go to varsity. Some of them are not going to even go to varsities. Some of them, we are going to enroll them in our institutions where they will have to do some of these courses. But the issue is that simply because we as people who are claiming to be visionaries, we can't even realize that when these children have lost so much, 2021, we cannot be sitting with the same problem and same attitude like we had in 2020. In 2020, we understood there was no idea of how this virus was going to behave. In 2021, we know this virus is afraid of heat. We know that this virus can be banned. Mm. We know that now there are measures and people are now used to uh, sanitizing their hands and so forth. Why push for the closure of schools? Mm. When you can always, and I, I have to take this moment and congratulate Minister Enji Mutseha for yesterday taking a solid stand and taking a stand for our children, because these children must be educated. When we, when we close the schools now, the Chinese are not stopping. The Russians yes. are not stopping. The yes. Americans are continuing with life. 
And mm -hmm. as they continue, if we were 10 years behind and we closed the schools for two years, mm -hmm. the repercussions of that is not going to be two years. It's going to be another 10 years. Mm -hmm. So it means that we are now choosing not to leave a legacy for our children simply because we are, we are pushing forward fear when we should be pushing forward hope for our people. Who are these resuscitation leaders? Resuscitation leaders are game changers. They're not just visionaries, mm -hmm. but they're game changers who believe and know that I cannot come in as a leader and do things the same way that was done by the time of Mandela. Leaders must change the game. Come in and read arrange the way things are being done so that we can be able to get good and new results. <laughs> and you see, when, when we talk about this, I, I hear people would say, no, we, we, we have our organizations. We are doing this, we are doing that. Mm. If you keep on doing the same thing over and over again mm. and expecting different results, then yeah. you're a fool. <laughs> because clever people know that I don't do this thing repeatedly that mm -hmm. has given me 30% of success and I mm -hmm. keep on doing it. I need to change the game and do things differently in mm -hmm. order for me to now begin to achieve at 60%. And, and this is the kind of things that we need to, to, to understand. Remember when Jesus Christ was tempted, mm -hmm. the devil thought, I did this to Adam and I succeeded. And then he wanted to do the same thing to Jesus Christ. Mm. And then he said, no, come, let's go. First mm. thing, he knows this man is coming from fasting. He must mm. be hungry. Mm. And he knows what is built into this man. Mm. And he says, I know you're the son of God because your God is a creative God you will not find it difficult to change stones and make it bread. Mm. He's playing into what Jesus had. And that is exactly where many men are finding themselves at, at, at fault. Because he looks at the gift that you have already. And then mm -hmm. he plays around it so that you can become disobedient. Mm. And when you become disobedient, what has he done? He has achieved his mm. own sinister objective. Mm. That is why you find a lot of people with so much of gift and they go on and serve the devil with the same gift that mm. God gave them in order to glorify himself. Absolutely, absolutely. He went on to, to tempt him by taking him to the top of the temple. Mm. And he said, if you know that God will always protect you, Throw yourself down, and I'm sure he's got a plethora of, of, of angels who would actually come and pick you up. So you will be safe. And he knew this is the son of God. But all he wanted was the spirit of disobedience to settle into Christ so that Christ can defy his father. Where do you listen or where do you get your instructions from? If you get your instructions from the media, mm -hmm. then you are already playing into the devil's hands. Yes. If you get your instructions from, from uh, whatever next Netflix and whatever, you mm -hmm. already know that you are now playing in the devil's hands. Yes. And these are the things that we need to understand. These are the things mm -hmm. that we need to begin to confront as men of visions. He went on and he wanted to, 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 to tempt him again at the mm. highest mountain, trying to challenge the issue of power. Because he simply says, if you are going to bow down to me, I can tell you for sure, I will give you everything that you want. Mm. Everything. He says, I'll give you everything. How many people today have fallen into the hands of the devil because he promised them one simple thing, power. Mm. He simply said, no, you don't have to worry. I can make you famous. 
how many people now, and if, if I am to go into the music industry, for example, just for a second, mm. how many people now that we know are singing absolutely hogwash, mm. but they are so famous mm. because he decided to bring power to them and they thought power is everything. But you see, power can be everything, but power that you get from your creator mm. is never going to be taken away. But the one that you get from the devil himself mm. will go away. Mm. And when it goes away, it doesn't go away alone. It goes with your life. It goes with your legacy. You die today, tomorrow you're completely forgotten. The other day, I was reading a story, a very interesting story that many people could actually go and, and find it themselves. The story of, the, of Alfred Nobel. The man who, for the better part of his life, he went on to create bombs that were killing people. And by slight mistake, the newspapers grabbed a wrong story. Mm. And then they published a story in his time of living. And then they, they titled that story, The Merchant of Death Has Passed On. And that man picked up a newspaper and he was reading and he read his own story being called the merchant of death. And he decided, is this how I am going to be known later on? Mm. And then he took the real consciousness. Consciousness was restored to him. And he decided, let me start the Alfred Nobel Peace Prize where people are going to be awarded for the prize for the peace efforts they have made so that they can save people's lives. Mm. How many people have been awarded now? Yeah. Most of the people know the second story of Albert, Alfred Nobel, but they mm. don't know the first story of Alfred Nobel. Mm. He made his own Damascus moment because at that moment, he chose to do what was right and he forgot about the past. And I can tell you now, the legacy that he has lived is going to live for a very long time because he decided to do what was now appropriate. Mm. We as people, we are built in with the innate faith. Listen to Luke 4 verse 18. It says, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he had anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He had sent me to heal the broken hearted to preach deliverance to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty they that are bruised. When the spirit of the Lord is brought back into you, you become all these things that Jesus Christ was. Mm. And that is the time of restoring the dignity of the man. And the man must know there is no full operation of men outside of Christ. There is no full operation of men outside of God. Men must first come back to the reality and get connected back to the one that has made him in order for him to start and be in full operation. If I can tell you one thing about automatic cars, I love automatic cars because Whenever um, an automatic car is built, especially its gearbox, it's built in with what I call the, um, the, the, the what, what is this kind of decision-making? I will actually share this decision-making with you because it's a great um, yeah. uh, concept that I have actually worked on. This decision-making is an innate decision-making. You have to be filled first in order for you to take that decision out of what you have been filled in. Now, here is, let's go back to the, um, and I call that instinct decision-making. Now, let's go back to instinct decision-making when we re are referring to the e gearbox. When the gearbox is actually structured, they structure it to a point where if the car moves at this speed, then you must immediately change the gear because then the lower gear is no longer sustainable. And then if you reach a particular peak of speed with this, 
then you must change and move into the other one. But the interesting thing happens when you are um, overtaking with an automatic car. The minute you decide you're overtaking, the automatic car gearbox would actually go back to the lowest gear. And you don't tell it to go to the lowest gear, but it feels it because it has been built with that um, instinct that says, now it is time to overtake and it is now time for us to kick the speed. And that's how mm. men should be able to take decisions. You cannot actually take decisions yeah. if you don't have the spirit of God. Because the spirit of God is the one that created who you are. It is out of this that God has deposited in you. That your decisions, when they are made, they are made to succeed. Unlike yeah. when you are taking decisions without the spirit of God. Mm. Game changers, don't follow the norm. Yeah. Game changers are creative problem solvers. Game changers mm. set new milestones and new trends. Mm. Who are the resuscitation leaders? My chief, I can see our, our hour is slightly out, but let me continue. Yeah, no, it's fine. Very good. Yeah. Mm. Let me call you, call, continue to the next one. Game um, resuscitation leaders are bold because they know nothing that you're going to do in order to change the status quo is not going to be challenged. Mm. They are bold because they understand that when they begin to do things in the right direction, there is always the opposing force. Mm. So you need to be bold in order for you to push back because if you can't be bold, then you can't go there. Mm. Very mm. interesting story. It's an interesting story that you can find in, in the book of 1 Samuel 17, verse 34 and 36. David mm. said unto Saul, thy servant kept his father's sheep, and there came a lion and a bear, and took a lamb out of the flock. And mm. I went out after him and smote him and delivered it out of his mouth. And mm. when he arose against me, I caught him by his beard and smote him and slew him. The servant slew the... Um, both the lion and the bear, and his circumstances and the his circumcised Philistine shall be as one of them. Now, this is boldness. These men killed a bear and a lion in their own territory. This bear and lion did not come to the village. Maybe if they were at the village, they would have been confused by the streets. And maybe that's mm. that's how we would have been saying, no, he succeeded because. Maybe they could not run on the, on the taro. But he found them in their own territory, in the bush, but he killed them. But here is the thing. The Philistine who is said, he was said to be coming to people. And then he stands up there and he says words to the, to the Israel people. And the Israel people would shake, including the king himself. But here is a young man mm. who comes with no with nothing, boldness except. Boldness comes not because you, you just have the boldness. The boldness that wins battles is the boldness that comes because you know exactly who is inside of you. You become bold because you know, I cannot be defeated by this Philistine when I am the living God inside of me. That's boldness. Now, bold leaders, are able to confront undesirable situations. Bold leaders are able to stand against the principle. Yes. Now, this is the time. We are talking about what is happening. The government would come out and say, um, people must go and vaccinate. Mm -hmm. Bold leaders are able to confront situations. Mm -hmm. You will realize that the unions in the history of this country you would know that the unions have made so much gains mm. because they actually utilize this very well. They became bold for the principle and say, the people of God are working, they are saving, and these companies are making and generating a lot of income. And mm. until you pay them tools down, mm. what happened? They gained. That is why in South Africa, they will tell you, this is the worst place to make business because mm. here the unions are in control. Mm. 
it's not just that the unions are in control. It's simply because the men who were leading those unions were had the boldness that was enough to take the countries and the labor movements forward. So bold leaders, they are able to stand for the principle. They put their lives at risk for the welfare of the others. Bold people are tried and tested. Now, if we were to go back slightly to, to, to David, what would have happened if David was killed? He would have put his life at risk. We would not have known this great leader, but he took a chance because he knew the one that was inside of him was much better and bigger than the Philistine who was just big of the body. Leaders who are, who, leaders who are resuscitation by nature, they are sensitive. These are sensitive people. They understand that life is not just about them, but it is also about all these other people, those who can and those who cannot, those who are able and those who are not able, those who are educated and those who are uneducated. Leaders who are resuscitative leadership, leaders, they are sensitive. Now listen to this. First Kings 3, verse 25 and 26. And the king said, divide the living child into two and give half to the other mm -hmm. and half to the other. They mm -hmm. spake the, then spake the woman whose who's the living child was unto the king, for mm -hmm. her bowels yearned upon her son. Now, this is, this is critical. The woman who, had the, who was the one that gave birth to the child, He's, she simply said, no, don't. Now, the sensitive leader, who is King Solomon, he ended up realizing that, oh, now we know who the mother of the real, who the real mother of this child is. And that is why he ended up giving the right child to the mother who gave birth to it. So it's sensitivity. When leaders are sensitive, they are able to do things according to how they should be done and also in favor of the people who deserve to be favored in that way. Now, this uh, sensitivity is what I call spiritual intelligence because it takes some kind of intelligence for you to realize that if this woman says, let us have this child killed, where is that pain? the pain of giving birth. How does she exhibit this pain? So if she does not feel anything, if she feels that having carried this child for nine months is worthless, let, her be, let this child be cut down by the sword. That is not sensitivity. And that is why the sensitive leader realized this is the rightful mother of the child. Mm -hmm. Now, mm -hmm. spiritual intelligence, it calls for interesting stuff. Mm -hmm. Spiritual intelligence helps leaders to judge sensibly and appropriately. Mm -hmm. Spiritual intelligence helps leaders to maintain their composure even when they are being tested. <laughs> how, many, how many people have fallen because they got excited just at the spur of the moment? How many leaders are we talking about today who have lost out the dignity of restoring and maintaining organizations because they were unable to just put their zips together inside of the boardroom? How many? Now, spiritual intelligence will help leaders to be able to feel the pain of others. We have seen it in the beginning of the coronavirus of, uh, last year, during the, the hard lockdown, where many people, when it was announced that it was locked down, a lot of people who had the means, they went and cleaned the shops because they could not feel for the next person. What was in their mind's best was, I, 
must have food. Because they did not know how long it was going to last. Now that brings in selfishness. But when you have the spiritual intelligence, you understand that if I eat and the woman next door did not eat, what is the point? If I am to crack a joke, who will laugh at my jokes? That's what spiritual intelligence does. We have seen it when people who are supposed to be the protectors of communities, those who are mayors and, 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 and counselors, when, they, when the free deliveries were actually sent to the communities, they were the first ones to loot those vans. Food was delivered into their homes instead of being delivered to the people, those who sacrificed and voted for them. Now, where is the stand of a man? The stand of a man is simply saying, I need to understand where I am. I need to be sensitive to the issues in my community. I need to be bold enough to confront what I'm seeing to be the ills of the society. I also need to make sure that I'm a game changer. The way I do things, I don't have to follow others because it looks fashionable. I can stand and do things and say things alone and still be recognized as a leader. And more importantly, I need to understand where I am taking the people, regardless of how few they are, to be able to take them forward. Where am I taking them to? Because that is the vision that every leader, and especially a resuscitation leader, should be able to do. Now, we talk resuscitation leaders. Can we move to what resuscitation leadership is all about? Resuscitation leadership is about, is a cyclical source. I call it a cyclical source because, you know, every organization has its own cycle. Today, it is performing at this level, but next year it performs at a different level. So we call it resuscitation leadership when it operates in that cyclical environment. So it means that it's a cyclical source of transition between the various stages of the organization, between the various stages of the family, between the various stages of uh, the companies, between the various stages of the country. So that various stages of development of the organization, whether it's a school, it's a family or whatever, that process is led by a quality, influential and transformational individual called the resuscitation leader. So it's cyclical because it comes today and we leave it and we leave it here. Your organization, for example, the current leadership of this organization, as resuscitation leaders today, you have a mandate to take the organization up to here. When you have taken it up to here, the new cohort of leaders must come now and take it from here and take it to there. That is how resuscitation leaders operate. If we are to talk about resuscitation leadership, this is what is so important. There are the five R's of resuscitation that I want to share with you. We don't just call it a resuscitation leadership model, but it's a model because we can trace exactly the five steps that we need to talk about. I'm not sure whether we would have enough time, but I think I, I might have to uh, squeeze down this a little bit. But if you do find your wisdom, I can email the entire presentation to you so that the others yeah. can, who want it, they can have it. Yes, that will be grateful. We have 10 minutes leadership. We have 10 minutes. I, I will just round this up as quick as possible. Yeah. The five R's of resuscitation. The first R is called a review. And this is where the man should be now. Because we know that we have messed up. Because we know that there are things that we did not do right. Because we yeah. know that we need to do things differently from now. Then we must retreat yeah. to the first stage of resuscitation. We must review. Mm -hmm. What is it that we must review? We must review our personal behavior because mm -hmm. it is important. We must review our thoughts. What is it that we are thinking about on a day-to-day -day basis? We must review our actions. How are we treating other fellow countrymen? 
we must be able to review our investment into the future within and with regards to our own children. We must be able to review our participation in the lawmaking of this country. That is where we should be at the review stage. The second R brings in what I call relate. We must be able to relate how our personal behaviors have affected the current state of affairs in our families. We must relate how our personal behaviors have affected the current state of affairs in our communities. If we can link my personal behavior and the social ills that are existing, we are at a better place that we are going to be able to resuscitate this thing that we call our country. Now, everything else that I spoke about under the review, we take it, we look at the actions of the government officials and we say these government officials, we voted them so that they can be able to lead us and create laws that will govern this country. Can we review? What have they done? Now, if we are able to say these government have passed abortion laws, is this abortion laws in line with our foundational beliefs? And if they are not, then it means that we have a reason to say these leaders have failed us. If we as men come back and say, what have we done in the investment of the future of our children? Did we fail? Now, if we have failed, we must now accept that this part is something that we must take full accountability for. Now, after relating, we must go to the third R, which is to respond. What is the process? What is the point of diagnosing, of diagnosing the sickness when we cannot prescribe? Once we have diagnosed, we must come back now and prescribe. Now, here is the prescription. In, in order for us to respond, we need to be able to ask certain questions. Are you in a position as an individual with the behavior that you have, the behavior that you know has crippled your family? Are you in a position to assist yourself to transform? Now, if the answer is no, seek help. Are you in a position uh, or rather, what is it that is needed for you now to get back to the original? Do you need to hand yourself over or your life back to Jesus? If you have to do that, it must be because this is part of the response. You don't just diagnose and you don't actually respond to the diagnosis. There are, there are a number of things that I've listed on that, on that slide. You would be able to, to catch up with them in the interest of time. Let's move to the next one. Now, the fourth R of resuscitation is what I, I call the recognize stage. We need to understand that what is it that actually created this kind of behavior for us? Because that is a stumbling block. So if we recognize that stumbling block, that this can actually create a problem for me, how are we going to deal with it? This is the part of recognizing things that are going to create problems. Those um, it, it, strong areas of my life, those weak areas of my life, I need to be able to identify them. For, 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 for a lack of a better word, I would say this is almost like that sort analysis, that the environment of the sort analysis, where you now have to analyze your weaknesses as a person and also pit them against your strengths as a person. You need to be able to look at are there opportunities? Let's say, for example, you have not really been doing very well for your family because you did not go to school. You dropped out of school. I'm just giving that example. And you now realize, I'm in this mess simply because I don't have enough education. What do you do? What are your, stre your strengths? What are your weaknesses? Let's now come to this part which I want to. What are the opportunities? Now, if you are 35 and you did not finish your matric at the age of 35, the opportunity is that you can still go back and register at Ibert Center. That is an opportunity that exists. 
Now, if you have messed up, perhaps you have actually killed people and you have now been um, uh, arrested because you did not do certain things right. Now, what, what is the opportunity that exists? While you're saving the sentence, you may as well register and you might end up coming back outside as an advocate. Those are the opportunities and the possibilities that are there. What are the threats? Many, many people, their threats are not outside of themselves. They are inside of themselves. One of that is pride. Now, if your threat is pride, identify it, recognize it, so that you can be able to say, now, here, I am done with pride, and I'm just going to do things right. If you have actually messed up as a politician, and you realize that the people have now seen you exactly for who you are, what are the opportunities? Turn around, do things differently. Be able to come back to the opportunity of, of the communities and ask for forgiveness so that you can start again and be at that level where you can continue. The last R is the reform R. So when, when you have realized how um, you have messed up, you need to now begin to reform. And reforming, it simply means that we are reforming. We are forming again. So it means that it's a repetition. We are getting back to the basics. Now, do you need a new cycle of friends? Do you need a new cycle of people who are going to empower you? Do you need support structures? Do you need relevant people who are going to assist you in channeling you to the right direction? That is part of reforming. But also, you also need to realize that in the process of reforming, you must prioritize things that you can achieve first and things that you will achieve later. These are the realities. Any developmental needs? Do you need any capacity? If you need some capacity, it will actually help also to go in that way. And for some... <laughs> I'm Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm not so sure. It looks like there's a microphone that is. Okay, thanks, 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 Chairperson. Um, in, in the process of that, when we are now recognized, when we are reforming, it simply means that we are now giving ourselves an opportunity to do things again. And when we are doing things again, we might need to find ourselves in a different environment. We might need to find ourselves with new people. We might need to create new circles, new networks, because it is out of these new networks that we are going to be able to find ourselves in a better position where we can say we are now resuscitated. Let me conclude this. There's a story that I read. It's a very interesting story. I, I got this story from the internet, so you can go and search for this story yourself. There was once a king who realized that his people were sitting in a comfort zone. And they did not know, they did not want to do things differently. And then it pained him so much that he decided he was going to go onto the road, one of the main roads, and he dug a hole in the night. And inside there, he put a bag of money. And then on top of that bag, he put a big boulder, a big stone on top of the bag. Day one, people just went there. Those who had cars, they were just going around. Secondly. Second day, people came and they were just passing. They would see it and they will also talk about it and say, this boulder is standing at the wrong place, but we cannot actually move it because we don't have the energy. After a week, one merchant, a man who does not live in that village, was coming to the village to, get, to come and sell. And then he saw the boulder right on top of the road and he felt for the people. And then he decided, let me try my best. And he took up all his goods, put them on the side of the road, and he started moving the boulder outside of the road. And immediately he realized that there was a bag. And he took that bag, opened, and he realized inside there was lots of money. His day was made. When he took the bag, he took his um, stuff, and he, there was no need for him to go into the village. But the king approached him and said, come here. I can see that you, you have a different attitude. And then he was given more than the money that was in the bag. Now, what am I saying? I'm simply saying resuscitation leaders, you need to realize that 
in order for you to move into a different dimension of your life, in order for you to make an impact in your family, in order for you to make an impact in your community, in the church, in the workplace and everywhere, you might have to move a stumbling block that is standing there and which might actually be just covering up a pot of wealth that you need to have. And these are things that you need to find yourself doing because it's very important. So sometimes we need to move certain obstacles, not our obstacles, but obstacles in the interest of other people. And it is at that point where we begin to see ourselves making a lot of inroads. This, I think, should be um, great enough to empower you and recharge you to a point where you find yourself shaking things up in your own personal space. And that's, I would be able to say, uh, let's hold it here. And I'm sure, just as I made the promise, I'll be sending this PowerPoint presentation to all of you. Um, uh, well, I'll send it to, to the organization and Salga will sell it, send it to everyone who is having an interest in this discussion. Mm. Yo, yo, leadership. Bob. Ab absolutely stunning. <laughs> Say above. Ab absolutely <laughs> stunning. Absolutely powerful. The comments could not stop coming from, from, from right at the bottom as you are Amen. talking. Great yeah. people are very, very grateful for what you are saying. We just wanted to just, you must just keep talking and talking and talking. Maybe talk the whole <laughs> week. We'll just listen. <laughs> <laughs> resuscitation coach, resuscitation stuff, and this is beautiful. You know, like I said, this is beautiful material. I feel sorry for those people who are not here, who are missing out on this incredible mm. amount of knowledge. And 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 the Amen. biggest challenge, and the biggest challenge, as as you would have noticed yourself, it's we 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 are a club of men. Yeah, but we can fail, fail, and this is my question. I'm leading. I'm leading with the first question while I know that people who are listening attentively, they probably have lots of questions themselves. And I'm sorry for those who came, who were uh, welcomed late into the house. Uh, we could not notice them because we are really, really concentrating. Apologies. I don't know how much of the presentation you have picked up, but it will be saved on the website and on the YouTube platform. You can revisit it there. Another apology is I recorded late. so. I normally don't do this stuff. People who are doing this stuff are not here today. So let's make just uh, dwell into it quite quickly. Leadership, you spoke of resuscitation coaches. Yeah. And uh, you have given us so much tools ourselves uh, uh, to know, to be able to identify the resuscitation coaches. And I like to how you explained what a resuscitation coach is and what they're resuscitating. Uh, dead situations, and, and this is a perfect presentation for Saljak, uh, that we must look around and every single one of us is a leader. They must attend to issues when they look at them. Something must annoy you inside when you move from one village to the next and you see Amen. the streets that are not right. If you can stand and say, I need to fix this, you are a resuscitation coach. So I was listening to you attentively and I absolutely love everything that you have put to the table. My question is, what would you, and maybe you don't have an answer for it. I don't know. Perhaps you have the answer for it. But here's my, my, my big question. You'd know that today they say it's Father's Day. You'd know that this organization is, is for men. It's a family organization, but men have been challenged to be members of the club so they can take into them to develop, to become resuscitation coaches and all that. But we don't find men coming to this kind of uh, 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 institutions uh, to come listen to this powerful information. We don't find men in our communities who fix things when things are down. We find kinds of men who are just pointing fingers and blaming and blaming and blaming. If you, out of the descriptions that we have give, given of a resuscitation coach, and there's someone in here who feels that they don't make that criteria, uh, does it mean ah, you're hopeless? I don't make that criteria. So yeah, well, I don't even know why I'm in this meeting in the first place. I just came because someone invited me. 
is there hope lost or the person who doesn't qualify in that criteria of being a research station coach, when they look at themselves, as you put it on the five R's, as they review themselves, they find that I don't fall into this. Is it over? Or the five R's will be able to bring them back. But I want you to be the one saying it. Um, here is the thing. Um, mm. In order to give an answer to this question, we must go back to the Bible in the beginning, right there when God was creating man. He said, um, let us create man in our own image and likeness. And, mm. and that man is everyone. So in, in, in that sense, it means that each one of us are empowered. Mm. By all means, we are empowered. We, we may have lost ground. Um, can, I, can I, let me share a bit of testimony here. Yes. Um, in 1990, right, um, when, when I was, um, I was at a, in a piggery farm in somewhere here in the Krugersdorp area, a mm. place called Hackworth. When Mandela was released from jail, I was working in a farm. Mm. Uh, and, and today, there is no trace of a farm in me, if you look at it. Mm. But at that time, I did not have metric. Mm. So when Mandela was released from jail, I was watching him from a TV, a black and white TV, a blam punk. Yes, yes. But it, wa it was that day when I took a resolution to say, I'm going to go back to school. Mm. And at that time, I was 21. I delayed, but when I went back to high school, I was at the age of 23. When I went to high school and got my metric at the age of 23. Now, wow. those that I was with at that time, they never believed when I said I was going to go to school. The only time when they believed was when I was coming back driving a car, coming to see them. So mm. my answer is simple. It's never too late for anything. Mm. Not, not anything. Mm. You can never, you see, even, even when you are looking at someone who is down, you can never discount a man because he's down today. You never know. God can change the situation of anyone just like that. I'm a, I'm a living testimony of that. Just like that. Just like that. Beautiful. So you can still be able to just achieve like everything. You just Absolutely. need a positive mindset. We have resuscitation. Yeah. The next question is here, leadership. I'm asked that I must ask you if there's any books in your name. I think uh, people are really, really want to a, a, a benefit out of what you are, the gift that you have. There's the response. I don't, I don't it, know. I don't know if you can see this one. It's called resuscitation leadership. Resuscitate, oh yes. When you hold it like that, there it is. I'm sure the person who asked this question has been answered. Resuscitation This, this, book, this is one of the five. I'm, basically, I'm launching another one. It's called Imprisoned by Yourself. We are launching this yeah. book on, on, on the 30th of June. Mm. Um, here in Rodeport. Um, yeah. All things are going to be on my website, www.manoramadon.com. So mm. any other book, there is resuscitation leadership. There is also uh, Teach to Inspire. There mm. is also Restart, Tune into Your Purpose. And there mm. is 10 Deadly Spirits. So mm. five of them. Yeah. There you've got it. There you've got it. By a show of hand, ladies and gentlemen, uh, the platform is yours. You have uh, asked questions. I'm going to ask leaders to try help me look at Facebook as well if there's any questions that are coming that side. Oh, Mr. Klaba says, yeah, thank you for the powerful, priceless lecture. My question to leadership Ramadra is as follows. How do you navigate the space around feminists who view the actions of men taking back their power as a patriarchal situation. <laughs> you know, I, I love it. <laughs> <laughs> no, you, you see, we, we're talking about um, a, a feminists, right? Yes. And feminists are human beings. Mm. So feminists, um, when we're talking about uh, myself as a as a man, and I'm saying I'm clawing back my power, I'm taking my power back, right? And the feminists, yeah. obviously, they have a different agenda. Um, mm. in, in the beginning, I, I mentioned that decision-making has been outsourced, and the structures have been mm. taken away. 
And of, obviously, the one that has taken these away is using people. Remember, mm -hmm. the devil does not operate as, as the blowing wind. The devil yes. finds space to operate inside a human being. And, and you know, mm. when, when people speak about feminism, feminism goes against, and, mm. and I'm talking about in its, in its form that is being publicized and given a lot of um, airtime in any other space. It operates mm. against the foundational basics and the foundational truths. Now, how genuine can that be? Mm. So you can mm. see that it's, a, it's, a, it's the media that is actually fronting with men uh, with, mm. with, with human beings trying to blow mm. and take away the power of man. Because when mm. man is in his rightful position, there is mm. bound to be success. And, and mm. the devil does not want success because every success takes mm. the glory and gives it to God. So he yeah. is in contestation with what God is trying to do and achieve through man. So the mm. main target should be the man. Beautiful. Yeah, Beautiful. so well, we, we, we disagree with feminism, but we don't yes. actually dislike the feminists yes. because they are human and, beings. And remember, yes. remember the good thing about this is um, even feminists can receive Christ tomorrow. Mm. So when, when he has received Christ or when she has received Christ tomorrow, all mm. of a sudden she speaks a language. If you are hating that person, you're in mm. trouble. <laughs> you'll be left alone <laughs> there's, a, there's another hand from U leadership uh, Zingi Salan Baba, the platform is yours thank you so much leader uh, thank you to our speaker mm. mine is just to recognize the ladies amongst us okay. and give them the platform as well, they are free to say whatever they want to say. Thank you. Great stuff. Thank you. Leadership, another question for you. Is your book available on EB? Um, sure. EB, sure. what, what, would that be electronic stuff or something like that? No, my uh, books are all physical. Oh, it's all physical books. This is Kula Mani yeah. Makubalo. Uh, asking so Kulabalo, the book is, is physical or exclusive books oh, oh exclusive yeah. books not yet not yet um oh. we deliver it directly from ourselves oh, but okay. there are there are means we we used to have it at um at this bookshop now it's now defunct fun sky it's no longer yeah. as strong as it used to be so they are focusing more on the academics that is why we don't have it there anymore mm, okay yeah, but I also want to talk. Uh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Yeah, yeah I'm I, I'm the lady that wants to talk. Oh, I'm oh, running. I was looking yeah. for your hand. I couldn't see it, man. No, I'm it, trying it, also to look for raising a hand. I couldn't see. I tried several times. Okay, no, it's fine. Go ahead. Okay. Uh I, I'm so challenged. Uh I am moved with compassion because uh of the waste of time that we did i am a former principal of tabisile primary school i was okay. also a mentor at matthew goniwe but i resigned mm -hmm. so i we have an npo which yeah. deals with women mm -hmm. so i think we can meet somewhere together because of the experience that i had uh mm -hmm. some women are dominant over men but everything mm. is blamed on men. So we started this organization because we wanted to get the women right to, to, to mm. remind them of their role. Mm. And as you rightly said that women will never be men and men will never be women, no matter how hard we can try. Because yeah. now we are venturing into a space that does not belong to us. That is God's space. So I, that's why I said we need to meet face to face to discuss a way forward because women also needs to be to be empowered because they think that uh, they can occupy the space that they don't belong to. So I'm I'm so happy that Zenisa invited me. He's been inviting me several times, but I was very very busy. So I prayed. I said, Lord, this one I shouldn't you lose. 
and by God's grace, I'm here. Ah, uh, we excited. Amen. 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 And our Thank sorry, our, our our focus is on mental health because yes. when the the the, ment the mental, all right, I believe in bio psycho spiritual, not as all right. Let me stop there because I said we should we should meet. <laughs> Yeah. Then we'll talk. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate that. Leadership? Yeah. Um, I, you know, it, it's so encouraging um, when, when, when you hear women themselves saying and declaring that we are not yes. enemies. Uh, and, mm -hmm. and the media yeah. and all the other areas of the devil that is using, they try to pit mm -hmm. us against each other. And that is not exactly how God wants us. If, if that was to be the case, God would never have brought Eve and, and yeah. placed him in front of, um, of yeah. Adam. Uh, because that, that is exactly what God did. He, he made sure that man was not going to be a complete human being alone. And, and that is the most important thing. And working together, we can definitely go somewhere, much, much further, in fact. We can go much further because we will be bringing in the two dynamics in order to create solid state of families going forward. I, I think I'm very encouraged by that. Absolutely, mm -hmm. absolutely leadership, absolutely. I'm looking for hands, leaders, if there's any hand. There's a little reaction button there. Please raise your hand if you have any question. So, so, so as, as I'm waiting for hands leadership, I'm not seeing any at the moment, but I'm sure that our hands will come up. So as, as, as you're talking and, 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 and explaining these five R's and really explaining how, how leaders need to find themselves by beginning to review themselves first. And it is exactly what this club stands for. This club doesn't uh, stand out. And for those who are confused, maybe it's good that I, I, I really reemphasize on that based on what you have said. This club is not for perfect men. Though no one is perfect here, we don't see us to be perfect. We are saying every man belongs to this club. Every man belongs to Sergeant. Yeah. And, and the most important message is you, you might have done many mistakes in your life, huge mistakes in your life. And, and I always say, as long as you're alive, you're in the game. You're yeah. in the game. There's still an opportunity for you to claw back and get your power back and go back and even go to those people that we have harmed uh, uh, or, or, or really hurt, uh, apologize and rebuild the relationships and come back again. It, it's a very remarkable story, what you have just uh, uh, explained. I think you have put it step by step that it's never too late for anyone. We can make it. We just need to get started. And those are yeah. tools that I think if anybody was listening, they would be very helpful to any individual. Yeah, to, to come back and make it in life. You know, you know, one thing that um, I, the, the one scripture that I came across when I was still trying to get my, my footing in all these things, I, I read a, a scripture that says, <clears throat> God's gifts are irrevocable. So if you, if you, mm. if you just listen to that and internalize it, it tells it all mm. that whatever yeah. you were given, yeah, it's never going to be taken. Mm. It's so yours. It's yours. Yes. And and it's it's only you who will make it matter. Mm. And if you don't want to yes. make it matter because you don't want to review, it's up to you. Mm. But at one yeah. point when we go back and when God, you know, I always see this as our lives as you know, big brother. You remember that show, Big Brother. When mm -hmm. they show, um, when you are about to be um, ejected from the house and they mm -hmm. show you what your life was like. And yeah. I, I, I'm, I'm really worried about that. I don't mm -hmm. want God to say to me on the day when I arrive there and he says, Mano, let us just give you a tidbit of what you have actually lived and show yeah. you exactly what your life could have been. Mm. I don't want that. Yeah. Because... If I don't do what is uh, what I'm supposed to reach up to, mm. then I will sit there and be so sorry for myself, whereas yeah. I could have actually done it while I'm still alive. And that yeah. is the challenge which everybody else should actually aspire to do. Absolutely. We were talking, we were talking, um, we still have 10 minutes, guys. You can raise hands, you can ask questions. The leadership is still here. He's not going anywhere in the next 10 minutes. We still have him. 
we were talking with Mzi this morning, my leader. And what yeah. came out in our discussion as we were talking, pride, men yeah. both pride. It turned out as we were discussing that men are full of pride. That is why we have organizations like this one, but we don't find men here. They are somewhere, yeah. they never come. You know why they will never come is because I know better. What is that that is going to say that I don't know? I've heard it all, all the time. How do, yeah. we, how do we address that? But, but, but some of the men, we must, we must also just um, uh, grant them the opportunity. Do you know, mm. do you know uh, the devil is very, um, is very cunning. Mm. I'll, I'll, I'll tell you, I, I used to drink alcohol myself. Mm. Um, and there was a time when I, I could see my life waning away. And mm. I, I had to take up a decision and say, uh, do I really want to see myself, you know, just wasted or do I need mm. to get myself back? But you see, some of these men who don't want to come here and the majority of them are men who are still engaged in alcohol. The time that they have mm. for themselves is minimal. So they can't read books. Mm. They can't listen to sessions like this. Mm. They, you know, all their time mm. is invested in drinking. And once they take one or two, their, mm. their understanding is disturbed. Mm. So they can't, they can't actually sit logically and, and start thinking about their own development. Very few reach their Damascus mm. moment at that moment, and then they get back and say, I need something different. But it mm. is us who have already made or met, met ourselves that mm. can now begin to share these mm. kind of stories. And especially, to the people that you have already uh, engaged with, because yeah. the people that I used to drink with, mm -hmm. they know me when I was drunk. They know me when I was doing whatever that I was doing. But yeah. these days when I'm talking to them about writing books, they stop mm -hmm. and listen because they mm -hmm. can see there's a difference between the, the me of that time and the mm -hmm. me of today. So mm -hmm. we, it, it's, it's upon ourselves. So if we, if we say um, they don't want to come, there are mm. two things that actually make them not to come. One, mm -hmm. they don't get to hear what we are hearing now because mm. they don't have time for it. Secondly, mm. there, you, you find that maybe if we are to take them one way or another, find something that will still bring them, even if they are in that state, maybe mm. we would plant a seed that will turn the situation around. But those, those efforts, we must never outsource them. We must actually be able to do them ourselves because we have that light so mm. we must hold them by our, by their by our hands as well so that we yeah. can pick them up uh, yeah. and bring them here so don't get tired invite as many as you can yeah beautiful beautiful very powerful indeed any other question that comes out yeah if I, i'm not sure on facebook if there's any question that has been asked there so yeah, this is this this is really important leadership. If if these tools that you have given us, and and I, I'm not sure if uh, what happened here that we did not get to, uh, to show the to share the presentation on the on the screen, but I'm gonna ask you that you must just email it to the office, uh, email address, and then everybody who's here who we don't have an email address of, please uh, use the WhatsApp line at lab, send the SMS uh, the WhatsApp there with your name and then we'll share the presentation with you. But those who are in the Saljek WhatsApp group, obviously the presentation will be shared as soon as we receive it within the, within the group and then you'll be able to access it. Yeah. Very powerful indeed. We have, yeah, uh, please do, please also, okay. Yes, it's noted, ma'am, the recording is also noted. Oh, Leadership Sipo knows how to do that magic. He does it very quickly and he shares the presentation i don't know how to do that but yes the answer is yes it will be done for you as well so as long as you share your details on the 083 number everything will be forwarded to you and then we have the youtube uh youtube uh, uh platform of the club south african leadership gentlemen's club you can go there and get the recordings of this 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 lecture today it's very critical and i think this is one record this is one lecture that as many people should attend to and listen as many as we can. I'll be referring people to it as well because yeah, this was very powerful. And 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 what also I want to say.
Yeah, what also I want to say in the absence of hands is uh, this club, we, 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 re we really are trying hard to get speakers like yourselves, Mr. Ramano, uh, yeah. to Ramado, to come and share this wisdom, this knowledge, this powerful uh, in, in knowledge with, 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 with South Africa, because we are wearing a national flag. And what I'm saying to people is, you really have done your homework. You didn't just come and say, those guys want me to go and, and talk there. You actually did your homework because everything that you said, word for word, has been very powerful. I could see that it's shaking the house. People are really, really listening to this and they're getting it. So so, so thank you very much for, uh, for, for the big knowledge that you have given us today. And then we just about to close today and uh, the lecture, this very powerful and historic lecture that we have given us. But Thank uh, you so I would much. like to also, uh, also give it to you now to do a, a closing remark. What is your last uh, message that you're leaving us? Um, I, <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, you know, sometimes when when um, it, it's not a sport, um, yeah. but I'm, I'm I was just tempted to give you a tidbit of one of something else. But let's 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 reserve yeah. that. Let's reserve that for for the other day. <laughs> 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 uh, you you know, as as leaders, we need to, yes. we need to be very sensible. You will remember I spoke about being sensitive. But we need to be very sensible. We need to understand yes. that we, we have been gifted with something big. For God to entrust you with what you have, it means mm. that you have been chosen amongst many. And yes. um, you, you just need to, to make your mark. You don't need to compete with anyone. Um, mm. That is why I, I, I call myself a resuscitation leader and a resuscitation coach, because that is the revelation that I got for myself. Mm. And everybody else would have their own. So there is no competition here. We can work together. We can make magic when we are working together yes. as, as, you know, as the people holding each other's hands. It, mm -hmm. It's so important. But mm -hmm. um, over and above that, I'm just challenging leaders to just think about this. The five senses. Mm -hmm. Because there are five senses in leadership. There's a sense of sight. There's a sense of hearing. There's a sense mm. of smell. There's a sense of touch and a sense of taste. Mm. That's how I'm closing it. <laughs> we will see it on the day of the launch. <laughs> we'll see it in Soweto. We'll see it in Soweto. Great stuff. And, and to remember when we, when we met in Soweto, I said, I want what you have. This yeah. presentation that we did not get in Soweto, we actually want to have it. And that was a beautiful call. Because it's, it was amazing. I just want to tell you it was absolutely amazing. Thank no, you very much. For, yeah, thank you very much for everybody who has attended this uh, incredible lecture today. We appreciate that you have made it. Ladies as well, I see Noma Makosazana is here eventually. I think they were struggling to log in. I saw the message that they are struggling to log in and, and uh, maybe the login details. I think it's the same problem that you had earlier when you started. So I'm mm -hmm. not sure what happened there. Yeah, so, so we are very grateful that we have made time for this. The recordings of this lecture both uh, or, uh, will be on YouTube and also they will be also available. Leadership SIPO normally sends them on the groups for everybody to have access to. I see that the yeah. WhatsApp number has been sent and the email address has been given on the, on the, on the chat box at the bottom. Please, if you know that Saljek doesn't have your details, just drop your, your WhatsApp uh, the number there and the name. Utep will come back to you. And once this presentation is being shared, we'll circulate it to everyone. Leadership, as you go, uh, where can they contact you for the books and for everything? Because really, I'm sure people will want to, they will listen to you more. Is there, you, you mentioned a radio platform where you talk and then you also just, 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 just get uh, 60 seconds to just, uh, uh, and, and sell yourself. Yeah, um, you know, with, with the radio show, we have um, stopped it a little bit. 
um, mm. because they, there are there are new developments that are that are coming in the space, and we don't want to overstretch ourselves. Okay. And um, yeah, but the best place to find me is on my website, www.manoramadwa.com. Um, okay. And my email address is mr, which stands for manoramadwa, mr at manoramadwa.com. And um, my number is 081-781-8529. And um, you can also send me a WhatsApp on this number. It's, it's only WhatsApp. This one does not actually take calls. It's 079-826-9403. And uh, when it comes to the books, my books are all listed on the website. Um, there, are, there are many other audio material podcasts that I've actually put there um, from the time when I was doing radio and all the other interviews that I've ever had on the national platforms, I've uh, uploaded them on the website as well. Um, any other thing that I do, um, there's a there's a show that we were doing a couple of weeks ago called Resuscitation Leadership Conversations. Um, we we have just broken up or uh, broken down for uh, for the Facebook, but we will be coming back after the book launch um, and do the rest of the sessions as we continue. We always do it on Monday on Facebook from six to seven. So we will because of the busy schedule now. We are going to resume that after the um, after the book launch, so mm. um, people can go on there on my uh, Facebook platform. They can see all that, and on YouTube, they can also find a lot of interesting stuff there. But the books they can order on the website. All the the prices there include the uh, the delivery um, with with mm. with Pep Store. So everything else is all sorted there but they can also get the books directly from me by phoning and all that. And then we can meet and hand over the book sometimes. And that I think is one of the things that we as authors enjoy more where mm. we are delivering the book and sign it right in front of the, of the person mm. who is purchasing the book. That, that's mm. one of those things that we, are, we, we enjoy. But over mm. and above that, I'm, I'm encouraging everyone. We can't actually have all people in the venue. Um, on the 30th, it's going to be a Friday and we are going to start at six. Um, come through 250 rand, you secure your, the copy of your book in an environment where there will be leaders as well, encouraging you and so forth. The flyer mm. is about to hit the social circles in a few days. So mm. yeah, let us meet there. I would really, really appreciate uh, mm. when people come and, and, and be part of this event. Uh, I don't mm. just do book launches. My last book launch, those who attended will tell you because mm. it's important when we do book launches, few uh, um, amount of hours, but we, it must be pegged to a point where somebody who entered must not go back the same. And that's how we have kept it over the years. Beautiful. Thank you, leadership. Thank, Thank you, you so much. You. Yeah. Let's meet in Soweto on the 17th of July. A big yeah. launch. Everybody who's here, so we're to the, 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 the big launch of the Soweto branch. We'll meet in Soweto on the 17th. Thank you very much. I'll talk to you Thank on the you. Of, 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 of leadership to continue our conversation. Thank you so much. Okay. Thank you. All right. Okay. Bye-bye.